Okay, I've spent the last hour or so trying to figure out what this moment is like. What analogy could best express what is happening with executive leadership in Idaho right now? Several suggestions from social media, some people calling it a circus, or it's like divorced parents in a custody case. But the best one I think is the analogy of, yeah, parents that are out of town and the babysitter they hired just said, sure, we can have cookies and cereal for every meal. Bedtime, what's that? Rated our movies? Oh yeah. I don't know, maybe one of those at work. It's really all over the place. It's really hard to pin down as well because this has never happened in the state of Idaho, which is something we said the last time it happened in the state of Idaho. But here we are once again with the governor out of the state and the lieutenant governor in her role as acting governor has issued another executive order. This one to amend Governor Little's original order that banned any sort of vaccine proof by a state agency. At 343 this afternoon, today as acting governor Janice McGeehan tweeted this out. I fixed Governor Little's executive order on vaccine passports to make sure that K through 12 schools and universities cannot require vaccinations or require mandatory testing. I will continue to fight for your individual liberty. And it really wasn't until yeah, going on to say no department agency required as a condition of accessing state agencies, state services or facilities. That's kind of where that went on and it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, long after that at three. We're going to go with a uh, little response at 353. This is what the response was from Governor Little. Just shortly after that, I will be rescinding and reversing any actions taken by the Lieutenant Governor when I return. He went on to say I'm in Texas performing my duties as the duly elected Governor of Idaho. I have not authorized the Lieutenant Governor to act on my behalf. Now, that being said, she is authorized because of the Idaho State Constitution. But before I even left the state, Governor Little went on, Lieutenant Governor unabashedly requested information from the Adjutant General to deploy our National Guard to the border. Yes, she wrote a letter to Major General Gorshak at the Idaho National Guard asking, well, basically to send some troops to the border because, as she said, the situation is continuing to deteriorate. And to protect our state from drugs and human trafficking as acting governor on Wednesday, she says, I'm prepared to answer their call because she says, well, they are calling for their help. As of Wednesday, my constitutional authority as governor affords me the power of activating the Idaho National Guard. And I'm requesting information from you on the steps needed for the governor to activate that National Guard. Well, Gorshak responded with basically one paragraph. Thanks for your letter. But they requested law enforcement. The National Guard is not law enforcement, as you are aware. They are a, not a law enforcement agency and under Idaho law, law enforcement is provided by the Idaho State Police. So she was kind of a little errant in that. It just keeps going on. But here we are with this happening and it's, the fun isn't over yet for Lieutenant Governor McGeehan because she now has to go to court and that's happening on next week. We still have to make it through Wednesday, but it, it took a lawsuit in order for her to get in front of a judge because she is being asked to be held in contempt of court for not turning over documents. It took six months for her to do so. That'll happen next week. Yep, and they could drop it. It could be dismissed. It could go forward, but you can see why she did ask for a one time $50,000 boost to her budget to cover the legal fees incurred with this case. Again, we are only into Tuesday this week. The governor's only been out of town for hours. So what's in store for Wednesday before Governor Little returns? We'll just have to wait and see.